Uh, another big decision that the IEC has taken is that the candidate nomination process will be reopened. The IEC indicating uh, that they believe that amending the timetable to reopen the nomination is reasonably necessary. And this is according to the legal advice that they received. Let's bring some reaction now. The DA has already sent out a statement announcing uh, that uh, they've asked their lawyers to explore every legal avenue to challenge this particular decision by the IEC. Let's speak to the DA's spokesperson, Siviwe Kwahube. Siviwe, thank you so much for joining us. On what basis will you be challenging this decision by the IEC? They've indicated that according to the Act, voter registration precedes candidate registra uh, registration. Good afternoon, uh, Clements, and good afternoon to your viewers. We firstly welcome the announcement that the IEC will be allowing uh, voters to register on the weekend of the 18th and the 19th of September. We're of the view that this is absolutely necessary, and this was something that we were pushing for. And you recall that the IEC had pushed had pushed out the registration weekend due to the uh, inflated numbers of COVID-19 infections. However, they the the, the deadline for candidates to be sub whose candidates must be submitted was never um, uh, either removed or whatever the case may be. The reality is that there was a deadline of the 23rd of August, and that was never impacted by COVID-19. So that's the first thing, that the reason why there should be a registration weekend is because there hasn't been a registration weekend, but there has been a deadline which some political parties have met. But more critically, Clement, the, the, the basis on which we are seeking to challenge what the IEC is saying is simply because ultimately the Khan court had said in, in its order that the timetable should remain the same and that the only amendments that should be made should be pertaining to whether or not uh, a registration weekend is or a registration period is is practical. And the IEC has gone and said, yes, it is practical, but they've gone and amended the entire timetable, which is not what the Khan court had ordered must happen. Happen. And this is particularly interesting considering the fact that the, I, the EFF had gone to the Concord seeking a, a similar relief and this was dismissed. So we're of the view that this is not the correct interpretation of the order and we are seeking the court's uh, intervention here. Uh, I'm trying to understand something and, and I'm sure you'll agree as a viewer that we actually need the reasoning from the constitutional court for, for this ruling because it's open to different interpretations. As the DA, you've got your own interpretation. Uh, the African National Congress has its own. The IEC has its own. Legal experts um, have had their different uh, interpretations. So as soon as we get the reasons uh, for this outcome of the Constitutional Court, it really the better. But what the IEC indicated is that if Clement is registering on the 18th, to the 19th of September and Clement wants to run as a councillor, he would be disadvantaged, and this is my understanding, he would be disadvantaged if the candidate um, process, uh, the, the candidate nomination process is not reopened. What do you say to that then? Because if they are not reopening this, then there are people that are going to register for the first time possibly um, on the 18th to the 19th of September. They are also eligible to run as candidates, as councillors in their areas, does that mean that they are disadvantaged? Look, I mean, the, the reality here, Clement, is that the, the, the Constitutional Court has made it, in, in our view, has made it quite clear that the only thing that should be subject to an amendment relates particularly to whether or not a registration weekend or registration period is permissible. Our view is that this period was open. There was a candidate submission process. Other political parties have adhered to that. A deadline was reached. And there's actually precedent where um, a situation where the NFP wasn't allowed to um, run in a local government election back in 2016 because they'd missed that deadline. And so we have to be very careful about the consistency here. And and that's why we're saying that we are seeking 
the court's intervention so that then they can have an opportunity to really illuminate on exactly what the intention of the order was um, so that we don't have the, just this difference of opinion or interpretation, as you put it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the order itself now where it speaks to uh, the Municipal Electoral Act um, that the IEC must publish such amendments uh, to the current timetable as may be reasonably necessary. And listening to uh, the chairperson of the IEC, Glenn Maschinini, he's basically saying that reopening this candidate nomination is actually reasonably necessary. And I thought when I was reading the judgment last week, those were the two key words. And that's why I'm trying to be practical so that we understand what it means. Uh, do you get where the IEC is coming from when they say, if we reopen the registration weekend and there's a Clement in Johannesburg who is registering to vote and Clement wants to run to be a councillor in his area, he would be disadvantaged if this candidate nomination process is not reopened. Do you get where they're coming from there? Look, I mean that 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 you know that is that's an that's an understandable argument, but you've also got a situation where the EFF had essentially requested the very same thing, and mm. that was dismissed. And so then there becomes an issue on on what basis was that uh, relief dismissed, and on what basis is this one not going to be dismissed? And we're of the view here that the IC is interpreting that order wrong, in that you talk about what is reasonably necessary. Mm. Uh, we our view that the court was speaking specifically around reasonably it's saying that you can amend the timetable if it is reasonably necessary where it comes to in fact factoring in a registration period and yeah. so we're not of the view that opening up the candidate registration period is in fact necessary or reasonable here because there was a deadline which some people may have missed but ultimately we've got to look after the integrity of this process and yeah. that's why we're saying that in as much as we welcome this registration period but we've also make gonna make sure that there's consistency uh, and adherence to the concord order yeah as we wrap up, Sivue, I have to ask you about the uh, comments that have been made uh, by the federal executive, Helen Ziller, who has really cast aspersions at the Constitutional Court. Uh, she seems to believe that, for some reason, the Concord must have tipped off the ANC. This is what she tweeted last week. Is that the position of the DA? Because she seems to be undermining the uh, integrity of the judiciary. Look, Clement, I mean, I think it would only be fair to pose that exact question to Helen herself. But um, ultimately, what we have been doing as an organization is looking specifically at this process with the IEC and making sure that there's clear adherence um, to what the Constitutional Court has said, but also making sure that there is, in fact, a free and fair and a safe election. Whether or not Helen is wrong or was correct, I think it's only fair for, for you to pose that question to her, um, because I wouldn't be able to speculates on that yeah but to be clear that's not the position of the party because a spokesperson you would know that look I mean the reality here is that we have been very steadfast on saying that we are looking particularly at the integrity of this process and that's why we've been in fact also including with that in, in working very closely with the IEC to make sure that we also submit some of our, our our suggestions and so where there's something that we disagree with like now we will be approaching the courts